What do you think is more of a public health hazard? A walk in the park or handling raw meat? The great French tradition of steak tartare, which is still served in restaurants in France to this day, consisting of raw beef served with a raw egg on top of it. Both major sources of illness, major sources of contamination. Two things that no doctor would ever recommend you eat even once. Being handled by the staff, I mean, it's a danger to the people working in the kitchen. It's a danger to the customer. It's a danger to the public at large. It's increasing the disease burden on society, okay? Let me just give you, let me just give you one more statistic here. Every year, the number of people killed by foodborne illness, 420,000 out of the 420,000 people who die from foodborne illness every year, 125,000 of them are under the age of five. That, that could be a priority. That could be a priority for democracies in the Western world. That could be a priority for France. Could be a priority for humanitarian aid to third world countries, okay? And it's not. What's a priority? What's going on right now? The police in Paris, France, are doing the only thing they know how to do. They're using the same methods that they use to repress and track people who participate in public demonstrations. The ultimate fundamental question we have to ask is not, is this particular decision right or wrong? The question is, who decides? Did any of you, any of you people in my audience, did any of you participate in a debate did any of you participate in a vote? Was there a referendum about whether or not people should be deprived of their right to take a walk in the park? This episode reflects very badly on the state of democracy in the Western world, whether it be France, Italy, Spain, the United States, or Canada. Da -da 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 -da. One of the peculiar asymmetries between the left wing and the right wing in the year 2020 in the English-speaking world is the attitude toward factual knowledge as such. I participated in several online debates in which I was reviled and in one case actually kicked out simply because I insisted on facts and statistics mattering in the debate. And this made me allegedly, you know, right wing. That I was I was conservative because I I cared about the numbers. You know, the word conservative means different things to different people. If you live in a country where the constitution itself is liberal, then defending that constitution and adhering to the principles of that constitution will be perceived as conservative. <laughs> We're living through a very strange period of time in which the government of France has deprived people of the right to take a walk in the park. And the police are in quite a draconian fashion, um, stopping, arresting, and fining people, issuing tickets to people to fine them, um, if they dare to go for a walk in the park. There is footage of the police using drones. So these are remotely controlled robotic flying machines, miniature helicopters, very much resembling a toy helicopter, to chase down, identify, announce to people that they're in violation of the law, and ultimately then police on foot can find these people and arrest them, issue them a citation. And this is, this is on the assumption that there's scientific evidence that walking in the park is a danger to the public, regardless of who you are, regardless of whether you are sick or ill. Now, really briefly, I, I used to live in Taiwan, and one of the major differences between policy in Taiwan and policy in France was that individual people who actually had coronavirus, and also some individual people who returned to Taiwan from Wuhan, China, with a fever, where they didn't know that they had coronavirus yet, but they did some initial testing to say, okay, you came back from that part of China, you seem to have a fever. Individual people 
were robbed of their right to walk in the park, right? They were ordered to remain confined to their apartments and live within certain, you know, limitations. And in many cases, actually, those people later were freed when the test results came back showing that they didn't have coronavirus. But some people, just for a couple of days while the tests were being done, kept the that there, There's a rationale there, right? There's, there's some principle that makes sense. But the principle being followed, I think irrationally, I think without any public democratic debate in France, raises a lot of really fundamental pragmatic questions. I'm going to read you something here from a, a, a bunch of guys called the World Health Organization. Every year, 600 million people become seriously ill due to foodborne parasites, foodborne bacteria, foodborne diseases, and toxins. Okay, foodborne illness as one category. Most of you watching this video will know the prime suspect here is meat. And the prime suspect, of course, is raw meat. Handling raw meat, whether it's raw beef or raw chicken, is very, very dangerous. Yes, cooked meat is also bad for your health, but there's really no comparison. Here in Canada, every year, we have funny stories about people getting seriously ill from eating undercooked bear meat. Or once in a while, some idiot thinks they can eat you know, wild game completely raw and uncooked. You can get very, very sick and you can die. And in their kitchens... People handle raw meat, and they have a young child, like a toddler running around. You might pick up and hug the child, or the child needs help. You can communicate diseases through touching raw meat and touching other people, okay? What do you think is more of a public health hazard? A walk in the park or handling raw meat? Which do you think is more deserving of uh, draconian measures to take away your freedom. The great French tradition of steak tartare, which is still served in restaurants in France to this day, consisting of raw beef served with a raw egg on top of it. Both major sources of illness, major sources of contamination. Two things that no doctor would ever recommend you eat even once. Being handled by the staff, I mean, it's a danger to the people working in the kitchen. It's a danger to the customer. It's a danger to the public at large. It's increasing the disease burden on society. Okay, let me just give you let me just give you one more statistic here. Every year, the number of people killed by foodborne illness four hundred and twenty thousand. That number was accurate as of two thousand fifteen. So it will have slightly increased due to world population growth. Obviously, we're inching towards half a million deaths per year. But the statistic here from WHO, 420,000. Right? And of those 420,000, disproportionately, 125,000 are children. And I have a memory of this myself. My father once fed me rotten beef. He made beef into burgers. I was a small child. I wasn't vegan or vegetarian yet. And I could tell from the taste of it, it was off. It had that strange fizzing quality. It tasted, you know, had the peculiar taste of meat that had gone off. And my father just bullied me into eating it. My mother was away that day. Uh, it was just the two of us in the kitchen, basically. And my father basically said, look, you're going to shut up and eat this meat. It's going to be good enough for you because he didn't want to cook anything else. And he ate it himself, too. And I got seriously, seriously ill. It really, you know, I was really stricken. Whereas my father was barely affected by it at all. I think just partly due to size and robustness, uh, eating meat that's gone bad or meat that's contaminated, it will, it will have a more devastating effect on a child than it will on a, on a large adult. It's my unscientific opinion. But whether or not that's my, uh, <laughs> my mere speculation, out of the 420,000 people who die, from foodborne illness every year, 125,000 of them are under the age of five. That, that could be a priority. That could be a priority for democracies in the Western world. That could be a priority for France. Could be a priority for humanitarian aid to third world countries. Okay? And it's not. What's a priority? What's going on right now? The police in Paris, France, 
are doing the only thing they know how to do. I recognize that they're trying to help, but they're using the same methods that they use to repress and track people who participate in public demonstrations, right? These are the same drones that are recording the faces of who participates, who participates in an anti-war march or uh, who participated in the yellow vest protests, right? These, these are the same methods of public repression. This is the same police state. This is all they know how to do. If you ask the cops to solve the problem, this is what they know how to do. Force you to leave the park, force you to go home, chase you down, give you a ticket, okay? <laughs> this whole hilarious episode of how Western democracies responded to coronavirus, which was, you know, at first too little and then too much but too late, you know? Uh, let me tell you something. I flew in from Taiwan to Vancouver at the time when the authorities in Canada should have had really serious screening for me and everyone else on that airplane coming over from China to Canada. At the Taiwanese side, they had all of the safety measures in place, including taking my temperature and really checking to be healthy. When we arrived in Canada, not a goddamn thing. There was no interest, there was no process, there was no procedure. I wasn't even asked one question verbally and nobody took my temperature with any, there was no interest, right? And then what, a few weeks later, close every coffee shop, close every business. Um, and, I mean, France has taken this next step of denying you even the right to take a walk in the park, okay? Ultimately, this disease is transmitted the same way as the common cold. Buying a slice of pizza from a restaurant is a high-risk activity, right? Someone could have sneezed on that pizza before you bought it and you didn't see, whether it's someone working in the kitchen or another customer. Having an open-air salad bar where any customer could sneeze on it before you take the food, that's a high-risk risk activity, okay? But the policy response, taking away your civil rights, and the extension of police powers and so on that's going on now, it's neither based on scientific guidelines nor on any kind of sound democratic process. And... You know, I'm not a fan of the communist government of China. To be honest with you, I mean, you know, I'm really not that big a fan of the government in uh, Japan or Taiwan either. This episode reflects very badly on the state of democracy in the Western world, whether it be France, Italy, Spain, the United States, or Canada. Ultimate question in a democracy is, is not of whether a given decision is right or wrong. I admit it's hard to know the technical details of how a disease spreads and what should be a public health priority. You know, is raw meat, like, you know, steak tartare, really more of a threat than, you know, people walking in the park during an epidemic? These questions, I admit, are technical. The ultimate fundamental question we have to ask is not, is this particular decision right or wrong? The question is, who decides? Did any of you, any of you people in my audience, did any of you participate in a debate? Did any of you participate in a vote? Was there a referendum about whether or not people should be deprived of their right to take a walk in the park? These things become normal through custom. And that's why unquestioned belief in cultural customs is so dangerous. And that's why I have to urge you to question and challenge customs in your own culture, like French people buying and eating raw meat with a raw egg on it and calling it steak tartare, or now the evolving culture of the control of public behavior by the government through these repressive means, which is justified in terms of public health and safety concerns, but not so easily justified in terms of this, the science in terms of how this disease spreads, how best each of us individually or all of us collectively could take responsibility to end it. Da -da 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 -da.